Yo, what's up, babe? <laughs> Come here. Get off the microphone. <laughs> All right, what's up, everybody? I just wanted to fill you in what's been happening lately. It's been a good week, so let's get to it. Last weekend, I went to Geelong, which is in Victoria, Australia, to do a speech. I start from the airport. So on the air, in the airport on the way from the Gold Coast, I met this dude. I just sat next to him. He was a hard unit looking kind of dude, like big guy, strong, bit of a badass looking dude. And um, this is a hot tip, right, for anybody who wants to start talking about veganism. You know how you, like, you want to bring it up because it's an amazing thing to share with somebody and you don't know how to bring it up. I got the way. It's always, it always works. All you got to do is ask this person heaps about their job. What do you do, man? What's it like? Do you enjoy it? Tell me more about your job. Ask all the questions. And then when they ask you what you do, you can say, I, you know, whatever you do, I work in an office nine to five and I'm an animal rights activist or, and I'm a vegan activist. And that always gets more questions, man. People always want to know what that's about. It's interesting. So then you can start telling them all about it. You know, I'm, I do this, I do that. This is why I do it. This is how I went vegan. You know, do you know anything about that? Have you heard of that before? Anyway, so I start talking to this dude and I'm asking him, he works in a gym or he runs a gym or something. His name's Carlos. He was a total legend, this guy. We had a lot in common, actually. He'd had cancer as well, like cancer of his tongue. And he, he actually um, died a couple of times and they brought him back to life. Pretty hectic. So, but yeah, and we're talking a lot. And anyway, I was talking about animals, you know. He asked me what I do. I said, I'm do, I do speeches. And I speak about animal rights and about veganism. And so we started talking five, ten minutes deep. You know, he's because he's eating a Hungry Jack's burger, right? And um, I can tell he's just starting to feel real guilty. <laughs> and he was like, you know what, man? You have, you know what, actually? I'll just, I'll link the video because I got a video because it was amazing. So this is what happened. So I just met Carlos in the airport. We had a little chat. Yeah. Carlos is a compassionate human. And he's, you know, after a little bit of conversation, he was eating some Hungry Jacks. And I said, man, you know, like, what happens to these animals? It made animals? me feel bad. That's right, I did. <laughs> so, so what'd you tell me, man? All I could say, I said to him, I said, being, being in this situation where I was eating that burger, it was actually okay. And I said it was tasty. But then, as, as we were going down the track with the story <laughs> of what you went through and how you became a vegan, it's just made me realise that life is too short. Animals do have feelings. Yep. And animals do have families. Right, yeah, right And the way I see it, you know, just seeing the poor animals get tortured and get slaughtered, look at yourselves. Put yourselves in your in their shoes. All right, you've got family, you've got loved ones. All right, they're probably suffering now while we're satisfied in our stomach. That's not the right way to go. So what are you gonna do, man? We're gonna do something about it. What are you we're gonna, gonna do? Change the world. What are you gonna do as an individual? Can I just say something? I am becoming a vegan. <laughs> oh, shit. So how good is that? You know, five, ten minutes just flick something in his mind. He's messaged and called me since. And yeah, he's been straight up vegan ever since that conversation. His wife has as well. He's lost nearly four kilos and he's feeling amazing, which is like, yeah, I'm just so stoked for that dude. You know, having an open mind, hearing new information and not being stubborn about it, going actually, that's logical, that makes sense. And yeah, taking it on, like good for him and good for his wife and good for the animals and good for the planet. <laughs> so yeah, really positive start to my holiday, well not my holiday, to my trip. The rest of it, all right, so when I get to Geelong, I'm freaking out. I hadn't done a speech in six weeks and I was really nervous. I felt like there was kind of, I'd put high expectations on myself, maybe the crowd had as well, I don't know, but because there's been a little bit of attention around me this year with my speech going viral and being on the TV a couple of times, talking to the news and everything like that. So I just felt like expectations were high. That could have just been all me. I get there and I'm start freaking out. I don't want to do speeches anymore. I've got this whole year booked of speeches. Why did I book all these speeches? What I was also worried about was that because I've changed a lot since my last speech, it's been six weeks. What's happened in that six weeks? I have changed as a person. 
I'm less like hardcore about it, you know? I'm, I don't know, I'm just trying this new way where I just feel so much more positive and in alignment with me. You know, it's just chill and planting seeds and just being more patient and understanding with people and not such a hard ass. I was worried that my speech might not be as strong and I was, I was quite concerned. I thought, I hope I can still deliver this, this good speech that's gonna inspire everybody here. <laughs> Look at this dog. <laughs> Come here. Look, just quickly, this is Stella. Literally the cutest dog I've ever met. <laughs> all right, so I get to, I guess start doing this speech. As soon as I started, all that negative kind of ideas and thoughts melted away and I just smashed today. Like it was probably the best speech I've ever done. Usually I focus so much on animal cruelty, mutilations, torture, slaughter, and you've got to talk about it, you know, because that's what is happening. But instead of really like bringing that point up over and over and over and over again, I balanced it out a lot more. We're talking about how great it is to be vegan, how good the food is, how much better you feel, how much better it is for your health, how much better it is for the lives of animals, how much better it is for the environment. You know, I just focus a lot more on the positives and I think it gave a real, yeah, a much more positive spin to the speech I was talking about and the things I was talking about. I'm so excited to be doing speeches now this year. Like, it's just my thing, man. It's just what I'm good at. I'm stoked for it. I'm going all over the world this year. I'm going to Indo. I'm going to Norway, USA, UK. I'm going to Scotland next week. I'm going to, where else am I going? Uh, Spain, probably New Zealand. Heaps of places. I've got speeches going to be booked out at all these joints. Hey, she eating the microphone. <laughs> Can't wait to meet you all. Can't wait to spread the message in your countries. And that's pretty much it. I just wanted to fill you in on what's been happening. I'm just stoked. So I guess what I just wanted to say is that, firstly, that little tip about how to bring up veganism anytime. Just talk about their job, their job, their job. Then they're going to ask you what your job is. Say you're an activist. And that sparks a lot of interesting conversation. And I also just wanted to say that, you know, we can talk about animal cruelty forever all the different types of things that are happening to animals that humans do to them we could go on and on and on and on about that for 10 years but there's so much positive stuff to talk about as well so many benefits to not harming animals for us and for them it's so good and i just feel like it's a it's a for me i'm definitely moving the conversation more in that direction because i feel like people respond more positively to it I feel like it's more motivating for people. It's less likely to, for them to get defensive and put their defenses up and not be able to have a positive communication there. That's what I'm focused on, on more these days and I feel like it's working better. So I just wanted to share that with you all. Anyway, that's it. So I will speak to you again in another video. I appreciate all your support. It's been epic. My speech is at over 5 million views now. 5 million views. Wow, that is a lot of seeds planted. I've been getting a crazy amount of messages from people every single day who are going vegan thanks to watching that speech. So if you haven't seen it, watch it. If you haven't shared it with your friends, share it with them. And hopefully there'll be an even better speech put up over the course of the next year. So that will be more positive and uplifting than the one. Even though I feel like the one's pretty good, but even better. So let's keep evolving. Let's keep getting better doing what we do. Thanks for watching my vid. I'll see you next time. Peace. He planted one seed with me. One seed. Eating animals is bad karma. That's it. That's all this dude said. And then I went off. You know, you sometimes have this conversation and you feel like he's smacking your head against a brick wall. And then you leave and you're like, that person, man. Like, <laughs> plans, bro. And you never know what is going to come of that. And you never know what that person's going to do. That person might influence someone. You influence someone. It influences 10 million people. You've got no idea the power of these conversations. It doesn't help. It's about being, being the change you want to see. Gandhi quote. It's about being that change. The means we use must be as pure as the ends we see. You want a compassionate world? You want a world where everyone respects each other? Model it. Show how it's done. Even when they aren't showing that to you. Show it. And see how they change.